Today on the Slider Lens, we're going to show you how to freeze action with strobes. Not high speed sync, but freezing action with monoblocks in normal flash mode. I'm going to use a trampoline, my Baja B4s, and a Warrior Princess to illustrate this principle. Let's get started and see what we can do. First, to understand how to freeze action with strobes, it's important to understand how strobes work, and more importantly, how your strobes work. They're all very different. You need to figure out how yours work to apply these principles. Strobes are simply a flash of light. Most think that that flash is immediate, because to our eyes, it happens so fast we think it just happens all at once. That's really not the case at all. Strobes have what is called a flash duration, the amount of time it takes for a strobe to come to peak power and then to tail off. Flash duration on a chart is like a shark's fin. It makes a sharp rise up and then a slow fall off, kind of a tail. T5 records the amount of time that the flash duration is above 50%. T1 represents all the time that the flash is burning from the time it's above 10% to back down to 10%. So consequently, a T1 gives you a much better idea of the flash duration because 50% of the light is happening underneath that 50% mark, so it's happening in the long tail off, and that can cause blur on your subject. So when you buy your strobes, look at a T1 flash duration rating. That will give you a true idea of just how long the flash duration is. Nowadays, and the uh, Baja B4 has this, there's modern technology that's called IGBT technology. It basically acts like a switch that turns the, the flash off quick and cuts it and gives you a very spiked flash duration. It cuts a little bit of the power out, but that spike flash duration is very short and allows you to stop action much easier. So there's something else you should check out when you're buying your monoblocks. Do you have IGBT technology? For our photo shoot today, I'm going to do three things to freeze the action. First, I'm gonna dial the power down to 50% on my Baja B4. It's going to reduce the flash duration as I dial the power down. Now, not all monoblocks will do this. Like the Einstein, it actually lengthens the flash duration when you dial the power down. So it's important if you're going to apply this principle that you look at the manual for your monoblock and see if shortening the power actually reduces the flash duration on the Baja B4 it does. Second, I'm going to shorten my shutter speed until I get a clip from the shutter speed on the image. So I'll start out at 30th, 60th, and I'll keep dialing it faster and faster until finally it clips the frame. And then I'll step back one step and that'll be my shutter speed. Third, I'm going to use the oldest trick in the book. All right, maybe not the oldest trick in the book, but it's certainly the second oldest trick in the book. It's simply a matter of I'm going to shoot at peak action. Everything that goes up has got to come down. So there's that moment when it's going up, when it just pauses, and then it starts to come back down. Now, I may not be able to hit that exact moment every single time. Now, I may not be able to hit and be very close to it. If I can shoot at that moment, I'm going to be far more likely to freeze the action because the subject is not moving near as fast. So there you have it. Dial your power down, get the fastest shutter speed you can, and shoot at peak action. Let's apply that to our Warrior Princess and see what we can do. I've got a trampoline set behind the wall that she's going to jump on. She doesn't have to get very high to look really good. It's just below the surface of the wall. She just takes a little jump to get up in the air, pulls her legs up underneath her, and it looks like she's way up in the air. It also sets me up so that she's going to go up and then come back down. I don't want her jumping over the wall towards me because now my focus is changing. I want her to go straight up and straight down. I can keep a plane of focus. I can find the peak action. It's a perfect time to shoot. Okay, let's look at our lighting breakdown, and then we'll get started shooting. My first light is a Baja B4 with a reflector on the camera left side. It's going to open up the smoke a lot more than this image shows. It'll open up the smoke on that left hand side. My second light will be a strobe set up on the camera right side deep in the background. We actually put it on the roof in order to light the smoke from behind. That's going to give us a nice rimless smoke on the right hand side. So two lights in the background for my smoke, camera right, camera left. This next image shows our third and our fourth lights. Up front we have a medium softbox with a grid as our key. And for a rim light, we've got a Baja B4 with just a reflector on it. Giving us a nice little rim on the cape and on the side of her hair. There's a few other things that are going on in this shoot. First, we've got a fan on the camera left side that's going to blow up underneath her cape. We tied a rope to the cape. It catches the wind underneath the cape and becomes like a sail. It just kind of flows behind her. We're also using two smoke machines. We've got a Roscoe Vapor Plus in the background. It's loaded with stage and studio fluid and it's pointing right through a fan. That fan dissipates it, kind of throws it out into the air and, and makes it a lot softer. We have a second Roscoe Vapor. It's going to be on the camera left side. So we have one on the camera right, one on the camera left. I use the stage and studio because our neighbors are complaining that the smoke is packing into their yard and their house and they're just 
complaining. So we use the stage and studio. It gives us a big burst, but then dissipates very quickly and doesn't flow into the neighbor's yard. It also goes to a fan to kind of break it up and gives us a nice wall of smoke behind our subject matter. For a few of the shots, we had an air cannon behind. We blew some leaves and material towards her back just to give another dimension of stuff exploding around her as she jumps over the wall. So here's a few of our images before we did our retouching. The last step is to take the image into Nick's software and to work on it. You know, first, I'm going to add a bleach bypass layer. I love bleach bypass. It takes a lot of the color out. I can control some contrast issues in bleach bypass. Then I added a light blue colorizer layer. I then added a contrast layer. And last of all, I added a vignette. So there's our final image. So this was shot for Dynalite. It's going to be an ad that will run in Photo District News. I guess I should say an ad that's already ran at this point in Photo District News. So check that out. I hope you learned something about freezing action and you can apply it to your strobes and to your situations. So keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. The hardest part of the process of doing imagery is doing estimates. It's the scariest thing a photographer ever has to deal with. How do I estimate something? If you go to theslantedlens.com slash estimating, a digital download is there. It will teach you all the things you need to do to put your estimates together. It's got templates, terms and agreements, everything you need to know to be able to put your estimate together. So go to theslantedlens.com slash estimating.